Yes, I know it's another AI app builder, but this one promises to be different as it should be really good at backend engineering, something most of the current ones seem to struggle with. This is Chef by Convex, and I'm going to jump right in and give this quite a complicated prompt to create me an application called Image Duel. This is where users can conduct simple A-B tests comparing two images. Think about YouTube thumbnails and asking which one someone would rather click on. What I'm trying to test though is that we get authentication, storage, and also databases, all provided and set up by Convex, and hopefully the AI does all of this for me, and it should be a super smooth experience. I'm also going to test this against V0, Bolt.new, and Firebase Studio at the end. Let's hit generate on this, and before I actually talk about Convex, what you may have noticed there is it said it was powered by Bolt. I assume what they've done is they've forked the open source version of Bolt.new, and then they've added in their own features on top. So if you like Bolt, you will probably love Convex Chef. Now let me explain a bit about why I am so excited for this one. If you don't know Convex, they actually offer a ton of backend features like real-time databases, storage, authentication, durable functions, and loads, loads more. They've actually done all of this with AI in mind as well, meaning that you can express your entire backend setup with TypeScript. What's even cooler about them is they actually open sourced the Convex backend to give back to the community and make sure there's no fear of vendor lock-in and that it's self-hostable. Even cooler is Chef by Convex actually allows you to put in your own Anthropic API key so you don't even have to pay Convex for those tokens. This is why I'm really excited about this and why they are positioned to make a really good AI app builder that is end-to-end -end focused. So with the explanation done, you can see here it's been generating a few components. It ran a type check that failed and now it's trying to fix it. If you're familiar with Bolt.new, this is all going to look very similar to you. As I said, it's just forked Bolt.new and then added in their own features on top and tied it all into Convex. So we can see we'll have a preview here later. What's really cool though is we actually get the Convex dashboard here. So we should be able to see our databases, the functions that it runs, some of the files, schedules, logs, tons of things that we get in this nice window here. And you could also just go to your dashboard on Convex to see this information as well. There we go. It looks like it's deployed my application. It pushed my functions to Convex here. It says we have user authentication, test creation, a voting system, dashboard, and loads of things like that. And the preview over here does appear to be working. In the database, you can see we do have a table that's empty here, but we have a load of tables like auth rate limits, tests, users, votes, and we have tons of functions in here as well, I imagine, like sign in, sign out, and loads of other things. So let's actually test the application that is built and see if it built out those backend features that the other ones seem to struggle with. Before I do that though, I'm going to click this deploy button up here to deploy this with Convex. You can see there it's going to be building my application. And genuinely that took about five seconds and now my application is deployed and I can share this with anyone. So if I hit view site here, you see we're taken to keenbat709.convex.app to get a URL for us. And now let's see what it did. So here we're on a sign in page. I want to be on the sign up page. I can type in an email here and hopefully it added that in. So I'll do subscribe at me.com, something you should all do. And then I'll put in a super safe password that definitely isn't just password. Let's hit sign up here. There we go. We're taken straight to the dashboard. So it looks like authentication is working there. I'll test in a bit signing out and signing back in. So we have a feed, no active tests at the moment. I can create a test though and type in a question here. I'll say, which thumbnail do you prefer? Let's do thumbnail and then just question mark actually. Then we'll do choose file, variant seven. These are ones that I have prepared earlier. Variant six, test duration one hour. That was something I mentioned I wanted in my prompt. And then require login to vote was another thing I also mentioned. Let's just hit create test here though. And hopefully those images are stored somewhere and that's added to a database. So test created successfully. Let's go to feed. There we go. We do get a vote for which thumbnail, vote for A, vote for B. If I hit vote for B here, Thanks for voting. Results will be available when the test ends. Let me just refresh the page. There we go. That is saving it somewhere. So if I go to dashboard now, we can see the results of that vote. We have my test, which thumbnail, status active, option A, zero votes, option B, one vote. It's actually kind of blowing my mind how much we just got from one prompt. We got the authentication, the storage, and also the database. And I didn't even need to ask it any follow-up questions to actually implement this in the back end. If you've used some of the other applications, you might have seen the thing where it just says to do, add this in later, and it's very annoying. They've really put in some work on making sure this ties in really nicely with Convex, and the fact that it's self-hostable is just perfect to me. I'm going to test this with one more user, so we'll sign up with test2 at me.com. There we go. I don't have any tests, but if we go to my feed, we can see the other tests that we have, and this time I'll vote for A, so I can create a test now. Hopefully, I have nothing in my dashboard. There we go. Now, let me try logging back into the original one. That was subscribe at me.com. If I hit sign in, we should see in our dashboard now that we have two votes. We have one vote for option B and one vote for option A. So it is all working. Jumping back to Chef then to see if there are any features I missed. I was honestly surprised that I don't have to do a follow-up prompt here. 
everything seems to be perfect and working as I asked it, which is genuinely really crazy to see. We'll see in our database here though, that we should have a few things. If I go to data, yep, we have some auth accounts in here. If I go to the users, we have some users, we have the votes as well. So everything is nicely tied into the back end for us. And I assume some of these functions have also been called as well. So we can see some logs like execution time is authenticated, loads of other things. We can see some schedules, the files that have been uploaded into our file storage. So those were my images there. And then also the logs. So there's really not much more to show you as it just did it perfectly in that single prompt. The other thing though, if you go into your sidebar here, you can see some of the other experiments that I had with this. If you go into the settings here, you can scroll down to the API key, add in your Anthropic API key, and that's where you're good to go. If you don't want to do that, they do have a generous free tier, which you can see I absolutely went through. So 19 million tokens there out of 18 million. Or if you're on a convex paid subscription, you also get some additional usage. So that was Chef, but let's see how some of the other AI app builders did, starting with Firebase. Now this did literally come out a few days ago and please remember this is in preview, but the result here is honestly very funny. I gave it this entire prompt to build me the application with the AB vote, core features, everything, the same prompt that I used before. And you can see that it made me a blueprint like it does. It said that it was gonna add in user authentication, test creation, loads of things like that. And I kid you not, this is all it generated. It, it's literally a page. I even checked out the code. It just created these files and you can see in the code, if we go into the IDX mode here, it, it's it's just this page. It, it did absolutely nothing. I have no idea why. Moving on to bolt.new, you can see I gave it that same prompt. Then it set up my super base project as I tied that in. And you can see it tried to do some schema stuff. Then it actually took quite some time as it ran into a problem here, tried to resolve it, ran into a problem, tried to resolve it, ran into a problem, tried to resolve it. And that went on for quite some time. This took about five, 10 minutes to actually generate. We did finally get something over here. Problem is if I go into the sign up, subscribe at me.com, put in a password, hit sign up, we get failed to create an account. And you can see we have a massive long error here that sign up is not a function at handle submit. So it definitely failed that on the first prompt. Now I could probably come in here and actually try prompt it to fix all of these things, but you can see how much of a smoother experience convex was. Finally, taking a look at V0 with the same prompt here, usually my go-to V0, but I don't even know what happened here. I actually had a few attempts at doing this. One time I got charged 20 pounds for some sort of integration. I don't even know why I added to my account, I had to pay for something and it wasn't V0, I already pay for that. Didn't even need credit card information on Chef Convex. I literally used my own Anthropic API key, which was super nice. The other thing I had to do here was make sure at the end of my long prompt, I said, use Superbase. After I did that, it was all right when we had that Superbase integration. We do actually have authentication with Superbase here. I've tested that, that is working. But you can see when we go to actually submit our form here and create a test, we do get an error. Even if I filled this in, it will show that we have an error. It goes through the creating process, but new row violates row level security policy. So it's done something wrong in Superbase. So it seems to me that Chef is the absolute winner here and it's the next step in AI builders. It's actually what I hoped Firebase Studio would do a few days ago, but do remember Firebase Studio is still in preview, but they definitely are in a position to catch up with adding in Firebase authentication, Firebase databases and Firebase deployment like we've already seen. So hopefully they do catch up on this as it's really cool when they can actually build out backend features and not just be used as a front-end prototyping tool. Let me know which ones you use and which ones you'd want to see in a comparison video. Tell me in the comments while you're down there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.